Monet, we are reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race uh, finale episode of All Stars Eight, which is the um, the season right after yours. How does it, how does this feel on the heels of uh, All Star Seven? How does it feel? Like what? Let's like, so see For another you. finale. Yeah, uh, it feels fine. I don't feel any ways about it. Um, I think does it feel recent? Whole, does it feel I distant? Does it feel like it just happened? I feel like it happened a year ago. <laughs> about a year ago. Um, I think that uh, All Stars Eight has been a uh, has been an interesting season. I think that uh, it's been cute. It's, it's, it's very lots of uh, love and positivity, positive vibes here. Which I my what season the, was that too. Was it? Because there's also a lot of drama and people quitting in an episode where everyone oh, yeah. threatened. Oh yeah, Heidi fully left. And there's an episode I, where everyone threatened to quit at the same time, and Candy yelling at Alexis, and then Alexis sending Lala Re home and betraying her, and then apologizing for it. And I wonder. Then, I wonder if they extended um, the invitation for Heidi to come back, and she was like, "I'm good. I won. I'm very curious." Well. I, we well, I maybe we can go to um, Heidi's Patreon and find out. I'm sure if we go to Heidi's Patreon, we're gonna find out if she was invited. But um, yeah, I think that um, I don't think that this season was really that much of a love fest. This whole I would I would not I would not categorize season All Stars eight as a love fest. This finale, I thought this finale was very lovey dovey. It felt yeah, so like we, our season was a very complimentary season. Like it was very you know there wasn't a lot of drama. All Star seven. But I don't think our finale felt as lovey. Like these girls are very lovey dovey. I don't know that I agree with that. I, I, I think that your entire season was actually very lovey. From the beginning to the end of All Star 7 was incredibly. But it didn't feel like that to me. Maybe because I was in it. Maybe that's why. Yeah, but maybe that's what it was. Looking in, I don't feel that way. Like, I mean, uh, the, we were talking we talk about this a little bit last episode, but the fans have been posting also like a lot of since me and Naomi's episode. A lot of clips from All Stars Four, and I was I'm 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 remembering how dramatic and how over the top All Stars Four was, and um yeah, this doesn't this feels less like that to me, but it's still fun. Yeah, I I think that season eight was probably more dramatic than season seven, or there was definitely season eight was definitely more catty than season seven. You know why? Why? Because seven, eight, nine. Well, we'll see what happens when nine comes around, or will it ever come around? Because it's gone now. You guys ate it up. You know, it may not happen. Oh my god, what if eight is the final season of, of season of All Stars? When do you think it's going to be the final season? Like, well, if like, nine was the final season, then you would eight would have been actually been the final season because seven, eight, nine. If seven, eight, nine, nine ever comes around, eight would be the last one. Just, to, oh my god, I wish I'm tired. I had a long day. Just take a wild guess. This is with no information. You're just taking. You're a gambling man. You're just taking a wild guess. And you and I got to put, let's put $100 on it now. We have to stick to this bet. What do you think the final season of All-Stars will be? Eight. Just like a random guess. Just pull it out of the sky. Eight. Well, I don't think you're going to stick to this bet. You already owe me, like, we, someone added it up. You already owe me, like, $3,000. You're never going to pay me. Because you so owe me money, too. No, 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 no. Someone, there's a whole thing online that someone added all Let of it up, and you it. owe me, like, $3,000. I'll send you the link. Send it, it to it, me. It was it was a Bob the Drag Queen BTDQ videos made the video made the post, um, so I don't think you're ever going to honor any of this any amount of money that you owe me at, at this point actually. Um, so my answer is eight. Yeah, because I know you need it. Yeah, yeah, I need money. We all need money. You got me. I need money to I live. I know. I live off the land, honey. I live off of my virtue in the land. That's what I. That's all I need in my life. Is, is that shelf behind you got paid for by with with with, uh, with land? Uh, yes, I, I I bartered for that show. I didn't. I didn't pay for money. I bartered. Interesting. Um, uh, but, well, season, I mean, do you, what do you think is going to be the last season of All Stars? If I had to, I'm just pulling out of the sky. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say 16. So just eight years from now? Eight years from now, 16. Well, we're assuming they're going to, I mean, we're assuming they do one every year. Which they, they have been doing for the, year. for the past seven years. They have been doing that. There's been that's been pretty consistent. Uh, six years, not seven, because one and two they were they were a, uh, two years apart. Yeah, but two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight were all back to back. Two and three were not back to back. Yes, they were. Were they? Yes. Because two was after my season, and the rest of them were all back to back. Two was after your season. Nine was after three. 
four was after ten. Yeah, okay. Okay, bitch. Okay. Okay, well, I'm glad we're on the same page. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, same page, different book. So, oh, I will say, so they started um, at the top of the episode. This will stick out to me because I, I don't know when this started happening. But in Rue's uh, voiceover, he says, and the winner, a one-year supply of Anastasia Beverly Hills. Before, I know season 10 of All-Stars 4, it was a lifetime supply. Can someone track when they change the language? I think they realize, oh, bitch, we cannot be guaranteeing these bitches a, a, a unlimited supply of Anastasia Beverly Hills. I don't think they used to say a lifetime supply. They used to say a sickening supply. Uh, for, for all season 10, for, for season uh, All-Stars 4, it was definitely a lifetime supply. So I think they I think they changed the answer changed the verbiage seven times several times because when I was on Drag Race it was a sickening it was a sickening supply. Also, when did it become Anastasia? Was you were you Anastasia? Yes. Because hmm. it was color anyway. Who who cares? This is this no, no one cares about this information. I don't know why. Someone probably cares. You know, we're diminishing. I'm sure it. someone cares. Some bitch in uh in in, in Brampton, uh, Missouri is like I care, Monet. I got you, Trishel. I got you. So all the girls were into the workroom, which I'm really, it's interesting to see all, all the girls. I love that they let all the girls stick around for the episode because I think it, it would be really hard to film an, a, an episode with just two people. Yeah, that would be so boring. That would, be, that would not be engaging at all. Especially when they, when they are really into, like, into each other and are, and are like being like fake mean to each other the whole like like there there's no there's no nothing there besides them just complimenting each other and then pretending to be like are you ready to lose bitch no energy no fire no nothing yeah um it was nice to have all the girls back and they are around the they're around the table and for no reason nasha <laughs> nasha offers her opinion to james that she wasn't blown away by her number she thought that there were others i was like what nasha, well i want to get reason? before before that nasha said they were talking, they were sitting around, and I was wondering, was Nisha being shady when she goes, Jimbo, I love your type of drag. She looks at Jimbo and goes, I love your type of drag. Looks at Candy and goes, and I live for your type of drag. Was that shade? Of course. I, I don't think it was shady. I think that maybe Nisha sees more of herself in Candy's type of drag and the aesthetic. Not so much clown Jimbo, you know what I mean? But Jimbo definitely took it as shade. And then they do the little, the little titty war, uh, uh, James and Jimbo. Jimbo is, has really become the titty girl. Like, well, because hers are just so over the top, like yeah. the most over the top breasticles ever. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're definitely a statement. Where, um, do you remember, weren't you gonna get a uh, a full like G- Jimbo's full latex suit? Were you are you are you getting it done, or you were gonna get it done? You just you decided. I was not. gonna I was gonna get one done, but I ended up not getting it done. Got it. The uh, the the artist who was making it was just not. Like, like if it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know what else you want me to tell you. If if I tell you that, like, I will make, like, if I make, I'm like, I am ready to make a down payment. Like, how much more do I have to do? I'm like, I showed up for the, I showed up for the fitting. I said, I'm ready to send you a down payment. And how are we still, how is it still not? There's, there's this one designer who I keep texting being like, I am ready to send you money today. I will send you money today. I'll tell you later. Well, just do this. It's um, what was his fucking name? I can't remember his name. I can't. I literally can't remember his name. He he's um, I keep uh, sending him, and I I DM him like too. I'm like, I am literally ready at any <laughs> willing any moment. I'm. He's also one of these designers. He works a lot. Like, bitches are always... It seems like he's always pumping shit out. But I don't know. They're tea. I don't know. But, I, but I'm like... After the third time, I was like, I'm never writing you again. I don't have the capacity to keep chasing you down. I keep being like, girl, I literally called you for the outfit. I don't know what else you want me to say. <laughs> um, but I, also, what did Lala Re say in Spanish? Do you speak... Do you... I didn't even hear... I didn't, even understand, I didn't even hear the words. Yeah, she got on... She was saying it so weird. I didn't. I didn't even hear what the words were. She has an accent, but Monica Beverly Hills think that her accent was great. Cause, cause, yeah, Monica taught it to her. Apparently, it's a, it's, it's a dirty saying in Spanish. Which, if it was that dirty, I don't think. I don't think they would have. Oh no, but we watch. I watched it on Paramount, so they would have, I guess. Um, but I'm curious if they bleeped it on TV because if they didn't bleep it, then it probably wasn't that dirty. I think um, All Stars is Paramount exclusive, or is it on VH1? I don't know. I don't think All Stars is because I don't think they can show Jimbo shaking her tits around on, on all on VH1 or MTV or wherever it is now. <laughs> MTV. Yeah, 
interesting. Um, yeah, uh, so they show off as that, and but and James, James kept her cool. James was like, "Well, that's why there's different drag for everyone, and whatever your type of drag is, there's some, something for you." I was like, "Good answer, James." Yeah, Nature, Nature really offered that with no prompting, but also if you notice. And we'll get to this later. James stored that little information. She stored those words that Nisha said to her. And she you, you we'll get to we'll get there. So then they do the interview. Jimbo does her interview, and we find out that Jimbo was raised by like abusive alcoholic doctors and scientists. Yeah. Yeah. In a nice in, in the setting of a like that's that bitch, you just never know what people be going through. Cause she was saying, like, we had like a nice house and a nice neighborhood and People, no one knew, like, bitch, what was going down in the house. Like, bitch, you never know what people, what people the fuck be going through. That shit is wild. Yeah, Jimbo grew up rich. Is she, was she, like, in the house next door to you as a kid? Yes. To what she was, to, not next, two doors down. Oh. Nice. Who, who Sometimes was I would hear, I would hear the, 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 the breaking of glass and stuff like that. And I was like, Jesus. Jimbo, are you okay? Who was in between you? Who who lived in the house? Was, there, was that, was that uh, Robin? Who? who uh, <laughs> Fenty? Oh, I call her Robin. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I call her. It's like that's what I call her, Robin. Um, Rihanna. <laughs> it's actually Oprah. Oprah. Oprah's house was there. Oh, I call her. I call her. Oh, Oprah. I call her Opie. Sorry, sorry. I just I forget it's when you when you're like close to them, you know. I'm obsessed with Oprah's Instagram. I'm obsessed with Viola Davis' Instagram. It's so good. Viola. Oprah too. Well, isn't Viola Davis kind of like a meme account? She's supposed to. It's memes a meme account. It's a full on meme account. It's like, look at this cat. It's like a picture of a cat hanging there. <laughs> Oprah's is fully just her just making eggs or going on hikes, and her uh, throwing uh, throwing Ella Duvernay a surprise birthday party in Hawaii by flying eight like eighty of her closest. <laughs> I have a few friends who know Oprah. I don't like. I have friends who have met Oprah and who know Oprah. I have never met Oprah, and I do not know Miss Winfrey. Um, but I feel like Oprah is like. Honestly, I really feel like Oprah might be one of the closest things we have to an actual like monarch in the United States of America. <laughs> you think? Like, besides maybe, and I know I'm going to get flack for this, but the Kardashians are low-key a little bit like a royal family they as well. They they basically do all the things the royals do. They 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 do, they make public appearances, they do some weird form of philanthropy, and they're a tourist attraction. Yeah, they fully are. Like, they uh, they are. Well, do you know what, I, bitch, you know what I found out? What? And I'm gagged. My mind is blown. What? So, on the Kardashian show... The houses that they show, which look like their houses, they look like it's filled with their stuff, those are all staged houses. Like, it's not their real homes. That's wild. That's crazy. I've never, I've never, I've never watched the Kardashians, so I don't know how no, outlandish once, it ever? is. You've never been curious to watch it once? I saw one scene from one episode, and it was from episode one, the where, oh. where, they're, where they're pole dancing. I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't go that far back. The two uh, youngest ones, one. like Kylie and the other one, are like pole dancing, and everyone's like, "Why are they pole dancing?" One, season one, episode one, and then I also, I, I, I saw, I saw the scene on TikTok. That's why. That's why it was such controversy, and I saw the scene on TikTok where Kim lost her ring in the ocean, her earring. Yeah, and, and Courtney, Courtney's like, Kim, people are dying. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Oh, oh, maybe that's for our next watchery. Us watching keeping up keeping up with our Kardashians. You know, I don't think that the Kardashians speaks to me as a show, but I'll give it a shot though. It used to. I I, I liked it back when it was on E. Now I, I haven't watched it since it moved. And I kinda wa- I stopped watching it like years before it actually moved to, but because I kinda like just lost. It was just it was just too, too crazy. Like the stuff, it was just so out of touch. Like, I was like, I just can't watch I cannot watch yeah. this anymore. Do you know anyone who's seen or met Oprah? Mm, no. I mean you know RuPaul. Well, yeah, but Do you have any like any like 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 well well, you know, um Coleman Domingo knows Oprah. Oh. Does he? Yeah, your Coleman Domingo's in the color purple. I, 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 I don't mean he knew Oprah before the, before that. I didn't say he knew her before that. I, I didn't qualify when he met Oprah. I just said that he knows Oprah. Oh, so you like you you guys talked about Oprah when you guys hung out? He just said that he knows that he that he met Oprah. And I, that 
Oh, when I did Essence, so you know, um, because Essence, uh, he didn't say cast, him and Oprah hang out. He just was just like, yeah, Oprah's a producer on the Color Purple, and I know, and I know her. The cast of Color Purple came to, um, oh, I do, I know Daniel Brooks. They came to Essence Festival to do a thing with Oprah. So Oprah was in the building, somewhere around me, and I'm like, I'm about to, I'm about to do my thing for the main stage, and I was. <laughs> I'm sitting backstage. Wait, I was. It was day two. I wake up at like nine a.m., like six a.m. to get in drag. Like I was fucking, and I was like the last thing I had to do. So I'm sitting behind stage, kind of falling asleep. I'm like waiting for my next thing. I'm just sitting there. You know when you like resting your eyes, you thinking your eyes closed. And I just hear Monet, and I open my Oprah. eyes. <laughs> it was Daniel Brooks, and she she's like recording. She's like, girl. I was like, oh my god, Daniel, so good to see you. But but she was all in her purple garb, girl, in her purple look, and they were all coming from an interview where Oprah and her and they were all talking about the new the new movie. Did Mateo and, tell you that he just saw that he saw Oprah a couple months ago? Where in Italy? Oh, yeah, she she was she was hiking in Italy. I saw that TikTok, and Mateo was like, "You look amazing," and Oprah was like, "Think something." I can't remember Mateo's interview. Mateo called and was like, "I just read it to Oprah." Where, like, in the market, like, like at, at like a store? coffee shop or something. He just was like walking into this coffee shop and open, open. Him and Oprah, I think he was going out, and Oprah was coming in, and and he what? said to her like, "You better work," and she said, "Thank you" or something like that. Was she? Was she? Did she have security? Of course, she has to have security. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, I saw. I, I saw. Oprah doesn't always travel with security because you know the famous purse story. Where she didn't have any security with her with her then. Um, I saw James Marsden recently. Who is James Morrison? Cyclops uh, from X Men. Oh, um, or have you, Bob? Have you seen Jury Duty? The show Jury Duty. Jury Duty. No, but everyone's talking about it. It's so fucking good. You have to watch it. Anyway, he's in that. But I was Andy and I went to have dinner somewhere, and then we were, I'm leaving the restaurant, and he's just in, I guess, waiting for a table. And he's waiting for a table. I walk by and I see him, and then um, he looks up. He does. He does a. And I, and I, but I, I didn't. I registered who it was, but I, I couldn't. You know, I couldn't remember his name directly. And I didn't. didn't Andy was like, "That was just James Mars." And I was like, "Oh my god, it was!" So I went back and I, I came and I was like, "You look fierce." And he was like, "Thanks." I was like, "You're welcome." Yeah, and I was like, you, "I love you." Did you suck yeah. him off? Oh, every drop. I fucking sucked the every drop of come out that fucking dick. Nice. And how was that? Was did he come quick? Was it heavy? Was it a lot? It was a thick load. It was like one of those like really creamy loads. And yeah. normally I don't like that, but I didn't mind. But I swallowed it. And how was it in volume? Like a, like like a few ounces? I would say three tablespoons about. Oh, okay. That seems pretty standard. Is that standard? Yeah. That's standard. No, three tablespoons? That's, That's standard. That seems like a lot, actually. <laughs> three tablespoons. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a lot. What is you what what is your average output? Well, I've never measured it in tablespoons. Um, how many ounces in three that's tablespoons? Like, that's like two ounces. One and a half ounces. That's basically filling up like a a a, a shot glass. A shot glass no, is about two, is about two ounces. Three point five. I think a shot glass is like two ounces. Well, I know a jigger is a jigger is a uh, is two ounces. What you call me? A jigger. How jigger what? Jigger many what? ounces? Well, I guess a shot glass would be bigger than the um. A shot glass is a lot. That's like four ounces, like or three. A shot glass is one point five ounces. Really? Yeah. So you, so you, so you're 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 filling up a shot glass with cum? No, not me. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not filling up a shot glass with cum. James Marsden did though, and I, I threw that uh. shit back. <laughs> and then when he came, he was very, he got very cyclopsy. Ah! <gasps> Oh, that's wild! I love that. That hey, was that, in Russia. Are we talking about come about the, about the Lord's Street, Zipman? ladies? Now let me tell you about me and Oprah. No, I'm kidding. Um, so Jimbo, <laughs> raised by Violet. <laughs> this show is unhinged. So when they go, they do the pink furry box. Which can I just say? Oh, are you going to say that you think it's misogynist? No. Oh. But I wonder how I feel about the pink the pink furry box. Actually, in what way? 
Actually, I don't think I don't think I was I was like, do I how do I feel with the pink furry box? I think what it was was the the conversation being like, why would I ever go near a pink furry box? I normally hate. I think that's what it is. I think normally when they talk about the pink furry box, there isn't so much being like, I would never <laughs> go near a pink furry box. Usually, I literally have in my notes pink furry box. I'm like Bob question mark. I literally wrote that note because when I heard the di- <laughs> the discourse around the pink furry box, I know, bitch, I know you been like the back of a motherfucking hand, honey. Um, and, and I also, did you notice that? Uh, so they James got the question whose body, who has the best drag body, basically, whose face and whose body? And James was like, it's between Nasha and Kahana, and I'm gonna choose oh, yeah. Kahana. And then James looks at Nasha and says what Nasha said to her at the table. Oh. She goes, No tea, no shame. Right, 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 right. I didn't even catch that. Look at you. You're 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 a you're a quick little fox. Look at you. I had to say, I was talking to somebody about this. I think Kahana's body is everything. I think Kahana's face body is everything. I mean, I've been I've been very uh, consistent with that point. And the person was saying that Kahana's body doesn't look real. I'm like, I don't I I, I mean, one, who cares? But two Who is the person? I, Got it. <laughs> and so I was like, I don't care. So I, I still, I, I, but also, I, I think, I think, she, I think she does look real. I don't get not real. I don't get surrealism. I get realism. To quote the poet laureate Bob the Drag Queen in the first line of his great song "Booty Booty Silicone." I don't care the booty fake. Make a nigga <laughs> hungry want to eat the booty cake. Booty cake. Um, oh. you know. That's, that's like yeah, booty cake. Uh, Kahana's ass does look great. When Kahana was shaking her ass during the little ass, I was like. Kahana's fucking great. hot, dude. She's hot. Yeah. But also, who cares if, if it looks nice, you know? My teeth are fake. It's funny, <laughs> it's funny how a hoe will sit here with fake ass teeth and make fun of somebody else's and be like, her ass looks fake. Bitch, you're, you have one tooth. You have the, you have, I'm like, bitch, you have the Barney. The, uh, you're lying from that, that thing you used to play all the fucking time. You would play that shit all the time. What? Um, The London B rap. Um, I ain't got time for these fake ass hoes riding around the town in my fake ass clothes. Couldn't afford it, wish I could have bought it. So I had to make it, take it, be creative. So when they see my hand, they're gonna stare like the Matrix. Oh, please. Jesus. (laughs) Anyway, um, so Candy had a quote, and I just really don't know how to feel, but she goes, A really good girlfriend won't pick your lipstick to go home. So, what did they say about you and, and Jessica? Me and Jessica? Not you, bitch, Candy. Oh, uh, but yeah, fair point. What did they say about you and Alexis? I think, but Candy, I mean, they asked her she played the game. Candy said, "Yes, bitch, I played the motherfucking game." No, I, but I'm just saying the quote where she said, "A a a really good girlfriend won't pick your lipstick to go home." So are Jessica and, and Alexis not her really good girlfriends? They ain't. Apparently, she just said it right there. <laughs> uh, but. I the the I love <laughs> when Rue was doing the TikTok. Oh, talking to Jimbo, like Jimbo's talking about like oh how uh the joy that he likes to bring to people and that's like a really big part of his drag. He likes to bring joy because of his upbringing. And then Rue trying to remember like and and Rue's like and you've done that um since your first season on Canada does Drag Race you've done <laughs> since we first saw you on Drag Race Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> oh no funny. sorry drag race kenya oh no sorry drag race cuba oh wait no drag race cambodia wait no what <laughs> but you know what i mean but honestly you and i have trouble remembering things then this bitch has done so much drag race i mean i get it i get it you know yeah uh candy um got really choked up um during her during her interview and then uh rupaul said i might be your biggest fan i was like work that's a high praise indeed that is high praise right that's high praise here's my thing okay i'm watching this episode and candy's doing her tic-tac lunch or tic-tac chat and she's pouring harder to rue that ruin you better pick me you better pick me do we really think there was a world that candy could have won 
Like I'm, I'm genuinely asking. I'm not trying to do a thing. I'm genuinely asking. I'm genuinely asking because like this bitch has all this hope. Like and RuPaul, I'm gonna do my best this episode. I'm gonna slay that challenge. I'm gonna share that lipstick up because I, because because I want to win. Like, is do we really think that Candy did stand a chance of winning this episode? I think that maybe there's a chance that Candy could have pulled something out of the bag. So and saying again, the Sasha Fuller effect. You know, I I don't think that. I think that there's, but but I don't think Candy rose to that. Okay, I think that Candy had further to go. So if if you're running to the finish line, I think that Jimbo is much closer to the finish line than Candy is, and there is a chance that Jimbo could have fumbled and stumbled, and Candy could have had a burst of speed, but it didn't happen. I think that Candy needed a miracle, and 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 in in the combination of Jimbo doing poorly and her doing very well in order to win the episode. So the chances, the chances are slim, but not zero. Yeah, I feel like it's like 95.5%. But yeah, who knows? Anyway, um, also, have you seen, do you notice that Michelle is now adopting this very, like, Michelle sits in her chair, and Michelle is, is not turning. She is barely emoting. She's like, and, and Candy, and you did a really good job. And we know that you did. And you have really... I wonder it's the RuPaul if effect. I think Michelle is now older than RuPaul was when she started the show. How old is Michelle? Is Michelle older than fifty? I'm gonna guess that Michelle's probably fifty six. She looks so fucking good. The, the woman looks. so Are you googling good. it? I'm gonna guess that Michelle's yeah. fifty six years old. Do you want to guess? Michelle Pataj is fifty four. Fifty four. Fifty four. And I don't know. And RuPaul is sixty three, sixty two. Sixty two. So, so that no, means that she she I mean, she is old. She is older than RuPaul was when she started the show. Yeah, because yeah. the show is over ten years old. Yeah. Um. Dang, RuPaul started the show when he was forty nine. Uh, forty nine. I reckon. Wow, look at that, and she looks so good. Yeah, Everyone, RuPaul was in two thousand eight, which was fifteen years ago. Gag, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, RuPaul is 49 years old. Uh, sorry, RuPaul is 48 years old. And look at that. She's, her her, her career is bigger than ever, bitch. You all, never give up, never give up on y'all dreams, y'all. Never give up, on, give up on your fucking dreams in Hollywood, whatever it is. Like, it is never too late to fucking do, have, live your fucking dreams. She does everything. Well, so, and, so, 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 it might be, for some people, it might be too late for certain things. Maybe. Like if you're 75 and your dream is to be an NBA player, it's probably it's probably too late. Probably it's never, Bob. It's never too late for you. Th- that's, it's that's, never too late. That's a big. That's just a big blanket statement to just throw across the universe. I think that I think that it's never too late is a is a is a is a nice. It's, it's kind of like um you can be anything you want to be, and I don't I don't actually know if that's true, but I think that it is a nice platitude to say out loud, and it can really encourage people, and it probably applies to most things in life. Like it's probably never too late to be a chef, you know what I mean? Yeah, but never but too late. for a lot of people, it is too late to be the youngest Oscar winner ever. It's too late for most of us, actually. Well, yeah, duh. But yeah. that's also not a practical. Uh, that's that that that's not pra- like that's just literally cannot be. But it's also probably too late for things like 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 I said, like being a professional NBA player. There's probably an age where it's ju- it's just too late. But also, you are you also picking out the like the ratio of people who actually are, are make it into the NBA. That is such a small that is such a small pool. That is just like that. Like most most professional uh, most basketball players won't even get that. Yeah, but also I think a lot of the things that you're talking about, like like what if someone goes to win Drag Race, the 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 pool for that is even smaller, significantly smaller than being in the NBA. It is you are more likely to be in the NBA than you are to win RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, if you're a drag, if you're just, if you're just regular, <laughs> Jacob, you roll the motherfucking figures one more time, you're going to be walking ahead with nubs. Try it again. It is statistically more likely to be in the NBA than it is to win RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Jacob screen opens up. The- <laughs> but I do think that the platitude being like, it's never too late is, is a nice, it is a, it is a very nice platitude. I just don't know that I, I think that there might be something a little bit dangerous about telling folks, you can just be anything, you can be anything you want to be. Cause I don't, I don't think that's true. Welcome to the stage, Debbie, Debbie Downer. Mm, no, I think that is, I think that there's something to being like, you can be a lot of things. You can be, you can, you can probably be most things you want to be. 
for children, I think it's not dangerous. I think I think that is something great to tell kids because I think that as a kid, having that in the back of your mind that I really can do anything I set my mind to, I think that is important. That is that, that 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 is an important thing to have as a kid. I think that for me, like doing the things that I wanted to do, like because my mom told me I could do that, do that. I think that I did believe that, and that's why I tried certain things. If my if my mom was like, "Boy, you can't do everything you want to do." There, there's certain things you can do and you get things you can't. I think that would have a way. I think you'd be looking at a different person if I got that message as opposed to, baby, you can do whatever you want. Here's why I think it's dangerous. Then we can move on. For I'll move on anyway. I, here's why I think it's dangerous. When you say you can be anything you want to be as long as you put your mind to it, as long as you want it hard, bright enough, you can be anything you want to be. And then it makes it seem like if you didn't get it, it's just because you didn't want it bad enough. It's because I don't you, think that's true. Well, let, well, let me say my whole thing. If, if you, you can be anything you want if you just put your mind to it. You can do anything. All you have to do is put your mind to it. So therefore, if you don't get it, it's because you didn't put your mind to it. Because you can literally be anything if you just put your mind to it. But you can believe that you... Okay, we, we're, we're getting to rivalry. This is going to be a rivalry conversation. Let me say this, because now i got to get my point too. Just because you say you can be anything you want to be, not being those, not being that thing does not mean that because you cannot do it. That's not... That's but not you can be anything you want as long as you put your mind to it. So don't, does that mean that the one thing you need to do is put your mind to it? I mean, you go on with that, but when you don't take it, when you try, when you study all the things, do all the tests, do all the things to get that thing, even if you don't get it, of course, you're going to be disappointed that you didn't get it, but your mind is not, my mind didn't, for me, my mind didn't click like, oh, it's because, it's because I didn't put my mind to it. Like, that's not where I ended up. But you're, but, I, but not, someone told you, you could do it. Someone said you could do it and you, and, and you, and, and, and you couldn't do it. Do what I tried. Yeah, you can still yeah, trying is great, but but you couldn't. You, that's not true. You can't do anything you want as long as you put your mind to it. That's not true. It's not true. But I I tried to do it. And listen again, I'm not saying yes. You think you to believe that is good, but when you don't get it, it doesn't mean you're not like I'm shit. I it's, I, I guess because I didn't want it bad enough. I, that's not where my mind went. So it, it sounds like you agree with me. You're on the same page that I'm like. You can't be anything you want. You can't just do anything you want to do. My point is that it's important to say to to send that message to children. I think is important. I think it is valuable. I think that it builds character. I think that it help it helps children reach for the stars. I, and I, I would, think that's important. And I think my message would be: try your hardest and go for the things you want, but without saying you can do it. You can literally do anything. I'd be like, just try your hardest and go and and and, and do your best. And if you get it, then that's that's really really great. But if not, that's okay too. This is why we can't raise a kid together. Okay, so they have their Tic Tac uh, dinner. Oh, fuck you, can't dictate. They don't call it Tic Tac. Tic Tac chat, chat back. They have the Tic Tac chat back, and uh, Candy cries. Jimbo has. They say Tic Tac chat back. That's what they say. I think so. Oh, I didn't. I don't. I don't. I, didn't, I don't remember that. Or maybe Tic Tac chit chat. I think Tic Tac chit chat. That, that, that sounds kind of familiar. <laughs> what? What? I was at Tic Tac chat back. I was like, that doesn't, that doesn't sound familiar. Did you have a yak back as a kid? Yes. Oh my God, Bob, we're the same. During the rehearsals, uh, <laughs> don't <laughs> cut me off, nigga. I didn't, I literally didn't cut you off. I let you say the entire thing. I even gave a chunk of time so that you could continue a and chunk, you didn't. A little bit. Us coach, a chunk. So, so how did I cut you off if you weren't talking? I was about to say something. You saw me open my mouth and you cut me off. Okay, we we have money. We're, we're recording this. <laughs> you can't just lie. There's footage. Roll that beautiful big footage. <laughs> okay, we gotta. We are half thirty five minutes in this episode. We're not even in. Go. You're the one cutting me off at this point. Candy Music is doing a very good job with the choreography. So they're back to the format. I call it the season the season seven format where you don't write verses. They write songs for you and you perform the songs, which they did it on my season. They did it on seven. They did it again on 15 or no, uh, 13, 14, and 15. 14 and 15. Yeah. Um, but they also wrote verses too. There was no verse writing this, this, this season. Yeah. Or yeah. Not, the, not at the end anyway. Was yeah, there even the in the beginning? Yeah, they, they did the first episode. I believe they all wrote verses. Oh yeah, they did for the song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so Candy's killing it, and Jimbo gets praised just for remembering. Do you notice this? They're like, they're like, Candy, Candy, you're killing the choreo, you're doing a really good job. Jimbo, you remembered. Oh my God. Well, th that's pretty indicative of, of drag race. Grading on a curve is very, very much a thing. Like, whenever yeah. a queen comes back, and whenever a queen, like, does a good job in Snatch Game, but no one expected her to be funny, she's graded on a curve. Yeah. How do you feel so, about that? 
Um, I understand the praise because you're just you're like you're so shocked that someone's doing a good job. You're like, yeah. whoa, wow. I didn't expect you to do this well. Yeah, I don't think the grade is nice, but also I don't think I think that that the, uh, the other girls are just saying like, "Wow, Jimbo, they're being very supportive." I think it's really cool. They're like, "Oh, you're you're, do, you're doing a good job." They're like, "Oh, wow, Jimbo, you really you really ate that. That's the, you you've had a lot of improvement. That's good." I don't think there's anything oh, wrong with that. Also, I thought I felt um was it was it this episode? Oh, the Queen's Gallery. I was annoyed that the Queen's Gallery was there for an episode, for one of the episodes. I think it was the roast. I'm like, why do the other queens need to be there? Like, for All Stars 2, it made, when they started the Queen's Gallery, it made sense, or All Stars 3, whatever season was, because they voted for each other. But if the queens are not voting for each other, why do other people need to see my performance, or my rehearsal, or my talent show? So that we, can, so that we as an audience can see it. And I think it's also because two people, it's hard to make a episode with only two contestants. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, but also, like, part of me is like, whenever these folks are like, can't rehearse in front of people, I'm like, bitch, you don't have to do it in front of people. So, like, get it together. I'm one of those people. I don't like rehearsing in front of people. I'm like, I'm like, get it together, man. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to actually do it for real in front of people. I need the time. I need the time with myself. I don't like, I do not like rehearsing. For, I don't like singing in front of people. I'm like, I like, to, I need, I need that for myself, for me to get mentally ready. I don't need to do it in front of people. Okay, have it, have it for yourself, bitch. I don't care. I do not care. <laughs> Have you seen the Terry Joe lives with fucking Saucy Santana? Yes. That shit is so funny. Saucy gathers. Saucy, Saucy gathers. Saucy gathers. Her. Well, Saucy had been doing this for years with Krishan. Uh, 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 Krisha, not Krishan. Krisha. Your Krishan would fucking. One joke in Krishan would be. Bitch. Saucy get one joke in for Chris Sean goes crazy. Yeah. Um, so during the makeup, uh, wh- while they're getting ready, I noticed that Jimbo is like making a costume. Yeah, she's gluing this. She, she's she's gluing uh, covering her shoe. Yeah, yeah, she's covering her shoe. Yeah, for that for the finale outfit we're gonna see. I later think she on. made that whole outfit right then and there. Did she? I think I feel like she was making it. Like I feel like what well, she was making because there, there was more than just she was sewing stuff too. But she could always be sewing the shoe covers. I don't know. I don't know what to what extent she was uh, doing in the room. But I remember being like, "What is Jimbo sewing?" And then she's like, "I got a I got a trick for this lip sync." Yeah, and um, it was it was a trick, all right. We get another RuPaul performance. I think RuPaul turned this one out. This is her best one yet. I agree. She really ate this one. This is she ate. Yeah. RuPaul ate that up. I was like, oh, also that outfit is sexy. Bitch, Ru's waist is getting smaller. Ru, Ru is getting sexier with age. Do you notice this? <laughs> Why are you closing your eyes like that? Well, I'm trying to respond to what you're saying. Like, what's <laughs> making what's make what is making her sexier? Like her move, and like I feel like her move is like sultry and sexier. The dresses are getting higher and higher. She's showing more body. Ru, like for the first what eight, nine, ten seasons, RuPaul only wore gowns. Yeah. from the from, from her shoulders down to the floor. Now she's wearing leotard. She's showing pussy. She's showing everything. I see what you're saying. I thought I thought that you were correlating her getting smaller to being sexier, and I was like, oh, that's a little. But then I, but now I'm no. seeing. What, but now, well, because you, you said her waist is getting small. She's getting sexy. Did you notice that? So that's why I was I was I was correlating those two. But that's not what you meant. Um, you know, yeah, RuPaul is being uh, much more salacious. I would say salacious, Bob. Oh, I would say more salacious, like more than more than she was. I mean, you just said her pussy's out, and now and now she's not being salacious. <laughs> is her pussy out or is she not being salacious? Which one is it? I misspoke. Her pussy's not out. Her dress is getting very high. Let's make let's make the the hymn shorter and then and the night the drinks longer the night the what is it mix like the bitch are you bitch are you did you have a drink no it's a quote from Chicago let's make the 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 party longer and the shorts the skirt shorter <laughs> just stop just stop just stop Jimbo performs a song called I remember being born this seems like a like it's from like Tommy like the Who's Tommy I can see this in Tommy. Tommy? You know the who the you know the who? Like the who like Dr. Seuss? The Who. They're a band, a British band. And they wrote a a musical about a blind kid who plays pinball named Tommy. And Tina Turner was in the movie. 
No, I don't. I Tina don't. Turner played the Acid Queen in the movie. I don't know that. Anyway, I remember being born. It was giving me the Who, and um, specifically the Who's Tommy. And um, I don't know what to make of this number. It's interesting, and that's uh, it, it, it's not very. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I was kind of watching it like, what's happening? Like the the the, the titty jump across the screen, shake thing is. I I, I don't know. It was very interesting. I didn't hate it though. It was just like, what's happening? Right. Which maybe that's part of the Jimbo experience. I think the Jimbo experience is for is to lead the audience. What is going on? I think it's like anytime I think it's all the beaten pattern for Little Strange. We're like, well, that's Jimbo. I'm like, well, what what isn't Jimbo? I, I I I'm very confused. I think if Jimbo would have done like uh, pay me in money, that maybe wouldn't have been Jimbo. <laughs> you know. Hey, hey real quick. I, no, hey, I'm saying hey. Actually, I'm them. Hey, I'm listen. gonna say it. Listen, <laughs> listen. I know that you already enjoyed this episode, but um, if you could do us a favor, if you want to see the rest of this episode visually, see it. All of our episodes are available on our Patreon. Yes, we have the full Monty. Every little second of me gathering this ball black bitch is on our Patreon for your uninterrupted viewing pleasure. Are you in front of a mirror? Anyway, let's continue <laughs> with the episode. <laughs> Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Okay, most Americans think they spend around 80 bucks a month on subscriptions, right? But the actual total is closer to $200. And if you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need to check out Rocket Money. They help you manage and cancel subscriptions you really, really don't want or don't need or just the ones you forgot about in just one tap. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Chances are you're just, you're one of them. You know what I mean? Like they're streaming app that you're boycotting right now yeah that for that one show you wanted to watch listen that gaming trial that you never actually use rocket money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you and for any you don't want or want to want to pay for or forgot you have you just hit cancel and rocket money will cancel it for you it really is that easy rocket money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off over three million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average up to $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash rivalry. That's rocketmoney.com slash rivalry. Rocketmoney.com slash rivalry. Having a good therapist is more important now than ever. And Alma is the platform working to simplify access to high quality, affordable mental health care and connect you with the best doctor for you. The website is so easy. It's very accessible. Girl, it's as easy as one, two, three to find the health care for you. I think it's so important to take care of your mental health. And I just love how easy Alma makes it. And sometimes for me, ease is a part of my mental health. If it's too hard, I won't want to do it. Alma helps therapists work with major insurance companies to make therapy more accessible and affordable. Over 96% of therapists at Alma take insurance, including Aetna, United Healthcare, Cigna, and more. People who find in-network care through Alma save an average of 77% on the cost of therapy. Alma has a diverse network of therapists to fit your unique needs. In the easy-to-use directory, you can filter for gender, sexual orientation, race, and every therapist at Alma has a detailed profile so you can get a better picture of their working style, expertise, even why they pursued a career in mental health. It's easy to get started. Most therapists offer a free consultation call to gauge fit. No upfront costs or commitments. Schedule your consultation directly online with a provider at a time that works best for you. Alma is available nationwide with both virtual and in-person options. Find a therapist with Alma today at helloalma.com slash rivalry. That's helloalma.com slash R-I-V-A-L-R-Y. Um, Candy Muse does pay me in money. I really like this song. And she did a very good job. And Monet and Candy heard your little note and they lifted her with intention this time. <laughs> with intention, honey. All the way in the air, full on T pose, crucifixion, honey. 
I know. I, I I heard after your comment last week. I was like, yeah, that's true, bitch. I I want I want someone to hold me up. Let me raise you up. Do you nah, nah, nah. do you ever suggest to be lifted up and then the dancers never. like? I would never embarrass myself that way. I have never requested to raise. Do not ever lift me. Well, up. I have embarrassed myself, and they re- they will let you know that your big ass will not be getting picked up. I have never requested that. Like I said, like and then everyone can pick me up here, and then they, then the dancers go ooh. <laughs> I, I have never requested that. I am not interested in hearing that. I don't want that. I that would that would kill my. I would fucking just just shoot me. Wait, why is Jake nodding? I don't know. He's, I think he's coming to tell us. No, we, I'm just. We, we, so we do have all these looks to get through as well. Oh. Jacob, you know, if the podcast is a little over an hour, that they, they'll listen. They, they sure will know. sit back and they will listen. What do you think of uh, pay me in money? I thought Pay Me Money was good. Candy Muse did a great job. Um, she looks. Candy Muse has been looking so good this season. All of her little looks are very, very cute. She's Candy's making me want to get buy some bigger, some bigger wigs. Like I like this, like this synthetic big style curly hair. That's very. I'm, I'm bitch. I'm ordering one from Edward now. I love you. Act like you've never had a big. <laughs> I said I'm just saying I haven't in a long time. I think that everyone who's a fan of me, so not you, um, I have been more into not that 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 look recently. But I want to get back into that. I used to all the time. Let me say one thing: these little fans of yours don't even fucking know you, bitch. I know you. Yeah, I've been I've been, I've been there for practically your entire drag journey, the whole thing. Nigga, same for you. No. Besides, Negative. Besides, besides the two little years before I came around, I've literally been around since then. So what? I, I've been there since you stumbled into the Ritz with feathers on your shoes. <laughs> I've been there since you were buying cosplay wigs and teasing them <laughs> with the bangs still straight. <laughs> Honey. First of all, I would do a little swoop at the end. So that's so you already wrong. Honey, I, I was there when you was wearing rainbow. <laughs> I was there when your tuck popped at uh at, at that at that one place stop, stop. yeah that was so these so these little fans who know you with like a little a uh, bust down they don't know they don't know monet <laughs> a bust down they don't know monet i know monet a bust down <laughs> all right let's get into these looks see look at rupaul look at the sexy pose pussy out Wait, is the pussy out or what? What is happening? I need to know: is the pussy out or is the pussy not out? <laughs> this one, it's kind of out. Wait, Look hold at on. This pose. She's feeling it. Yeah, she's. I mean, she's really. I, mean, I love Carson's jacket. Do you oh, think, it's fully stoned. I was like, do you okay, think it came stoned, or do you think like someone stoned it for him, or maybe someone Carson stoned it? I was talking to Carson um, recently, and Carson really. We, I be forgetting that Carson is a real fashionista. Yes, he's he invited uh, he invited uh, me and Annie to come to his ranch in Pennsylvania. I was like, Carson, I'll go to your ranch, uh, but I, I, if I come, I want to do a photo shoot on a horse. He said, he said that's the only where you're coming. You're doing a photo shoot on a horse. I was like, bet I'm gonna come and do it. Like Carson be looking at the girls on the runway or stuff, and and like we, we did this brunch together years ago, years ago in New York City. This brunch gig. And Carson was like, I was wearing something. And Carson was like, oh, that's the blank, blank, blank from blank, blank, blank in the year, blank, blank, blank. It was so gaggy. I was like, how did you know that? And he was like, I, I just know. I'm telling you, season, t- I don't know if season 10 of All Stars 4. When we had the design challenges, Carson would come up from behind the desk and he would take off his glasses and look at everyone's outfits and like go up and down and be like, hmm, aubergine, hmm, satin on the, oh, hmm, okay. Like he was like inspecting our garments up close and personal. And then yeah, even critique. Carson is low key Tim Gunn. <laughs> what? Like you, what you, what you would expect from Tim Gunn, Carson also does that. But Carson is really like insanely knowledgeable. Yeah. And, it's just it's genuinely gaggy. Yeah, it's fierce. And because Carson's so silly, you forget that he is so skilled in the world of fashion. He's so funny. He's so yeah, he will be like he'll be like, oh, a half loop stitch on China silk. Like he's like he's literally that bitch. Yeah, literally. Um. Okay, Bob, we got to get these rummy looks. Yeah, Carson says. Oh, Carson said. Oh, Ross, you want to wear your little sequin, your little reverse sequin? 
Bitch, I come with Swarovski stones down. Ross looks cute too, though. Ross does look cute. Ross, been, he's been in this very 70s uh, 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 um, look lately. 70s vibe. I'm into it. Monica Beverly Hills. Z -z 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 -z. Um, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of this of this garment. I'm particular. not either. I don't know why she went to purple hair. Black hair would have been great with this. Um, I like a black a black slick back would have been great. But even so, I'm not really crazy about the dress. I like the dress without the purple the chignon. I actually really love a tool boa. I really love a massive tool boa. I have one in yellow. You can borrow it if you need to, if you want to sometime. No, thank you. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get a nice one. Um, let's go on to Nasha Lopez. <laughs> You're fucking, it's so fucking annoying. I, I've seen, I, it's just that I've seen the one you have, and I just, I, I like, I want, I want a good one. Anyway, um, Nasha Lopez. It's I not think, personal. I just, I just don't want to have like a. I think I love this like nude illusion uh thing, and I like the coat too. I don't love the hair, but I think I, I don't know something about the hair is strange to me. Oh, what it is? Oh, because the Marcells are going this way, and the puffy part is this way too. I'm like, she should have done the thing here, but I think I think this is beautiful, and I, I really like this dress, and I like this coat. Yeah, I love this brocade coat. I sound like <laughs> I sound like Carson Kressley. Mm -hmm. Brocade. I love don't this. Worry, uh, you know. I love this. I love this. This like coat that she got going. This uh, pattern for her is a mainstay in her drag. This like what nude illusion like iceberg style dress. It looks, but it looks good on her though. Iceberg. To me, they, they these pieces look like look like icebergs. <laughs> okay. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Um, <laughs> Just going to Kasha Davis. I love this look. I love this look. I would wear this. Um, I don't hate the gown. I th I think I think it's the hair. I think I wish I think I think if the hair because the hair is so dark. It kind of looks you can't see with black hair like that. You never see dimension on it. So it just it kind of looks like she's not wearing a wig and she's already bald. So yeah, but I I, I think the dress is nice. I think the dress is nice. Yeah, I love the coat. I like this look a lot. Let's go on yeah. to uh, Miss Darren Lake, Lake, who said she's in a gown. I was like, baby, I love you. This is not a gown. I, you look great. And I do like this look. It is not a gown. Yeah, it's a cat suit uh, with a skirt jacket on top of it. I like her as a redhead. I do. I think Darian, she's worn a, a few redhead looks. And it always is very nice. I don't like the corset over, though. The, the overbust court, like, corset peplum thing i don't like that yeah it's not my fave when once she, oh the, the, she took that off afterwards yeah yeah um let's go on to candace um patrice Muse. wait wh why are we going straight to candy she's next i know but maybe she shouldn't be because she's not next in the thing we should, let's, let's just skip her uh james mansfield looks Great. insane i wonder if the person who made nation's dress made her dress too well, in this maybe I'm like I wish he, James did this more. I know I know she loves her titty bib and she likes doing that uh, fantasy, but I'm like James, this like, this gives you so much more variety to your drag when she just wears other things. Like this looks, I guess maybe that's why this feels so amazing because we 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 usually see her with her the, the straps and the titties out, and I think this looks very beautiful. It's very Vegas. It's very showgirl, and it looks the orange is very beautiful on her. I think she looks incredible she looks great i agree james looks very stunning this might this is my favorite look i've ever seen on james ever um let's go to kahana montrese i, I love, love this this look and her face bitch her face she looks stunning she looks so beautiful the eye makeup was gorgeous also the instagram video about this she did this whole post about ocean and how um this the video she made to go with this is beautiful. I love this. I love, love, love this. I want to see the video. I feel like, I don't know how she spells her name, but she's hard to find. Kahana? No. I can't find her. How? K-A-H-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Maybe I am blocked. <laughs> oh, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not blocked, no. Oh, damn, that would have been good. Oh wow. It's great.
I this this made me a a big Kahan Montrese fan. Like I'm like a Kahan Montrese fan. You know, I really feel like she did a really good job and I don't think she stood a chance in the fame games because of the multiplying of the votes. And there was like nothing anyone else could have done. But yeah. she her social media for this is just so impressive. Yeah, and she talked about in the post how like she last year she went down to she was crying to this to this, at this river and like asking just for one more chance to show people like you know who she is and what she can do. And bitch, she did it. I'm a Kahana Montrese fan. Last year, I went to the river and cried out my heart to Oshan. I was feeling stagnant, unseen, and unworthy. I prayed if she'd give me a chance to be on TV again to show how much I've grown that I would give my all and, and everything I do. This woman has answered my prayers 10 times over. Oshan's love saved my life, rejuvenated me, giving me a, giving me a reason worth living. Oshan is, is commonly called the river goddess. Yeah. The river or Risha or goddess in the Yoruba religion and is typically associated with water purity fertility fertility love and sensuality mm-hmm. work she looks amazing let's go on to miss lala he um <clears throat> lala i like this color on her i think it's very beautiful on her lala always has like a questionable wig with her outfits that kind of that kind of i feel like detracts from it like I, I don't know why she didn't cut the lace in between because you can kind of see the white lace like showing the whole time and it kind of hits her head a certain way. And I, I just wish she would have, because other than that, I think it's a, this is a beautiful gown. The color is beautiful on her and I like the silhouette. I just think that that kind of takes you out of it a little bit for me. I wonder why she didn't wear titties today because she normally wears them. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really, I, it didn't bother me. I didn't notice that. She does look good. Uh, I, I agree with you about the wig. I, I think the wig could have been different. Like I wouldn't have done red. It's too much. It's, too, it's a little too much red. Yes, yeah, too, um, too, too, too monotone. Too monotone. When I tell you, I know. I can see you wearing this motherfucking. <laughs> I love Alexis's drag. I love her drag so much. I love her hair. I love the outfit she wears. She's so stunning. She looks so elegant. She looks super classy. Mm-hmm. I love Beautiful. this look. This is my favorite look of the night. She looks beautiful, and the color is divine on her, and her face, her 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 teeth, like she looks. This is great. This is really. She looks. She looks very, very good. She looks like an opera singer. Yeah, I see that. I see that. There's a she picture looks- of um. Leontine Price. Kathy no. Battle. No. Cecilia Bartoli. No. Renee Fleming. No. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who else to say. Is it an opera singer? Yes. Can you tell us any more about this person? Yes, I could tell you. Well, I should know her name, and her name in this moment is just escaping me, and I literally know her personally. She's like literally... Maria Callas? A, a friend of mine. Yeah, I know Maria Callas personally, yes. That I met through you, Monet. My friend? Arcia? Arcia. Oh, there's a picture of Arcia somewhere on her I, I social media. The association of, of Arcia and Alexis, I just would not. Well, there's a picture of Arcia somewhere on her social media, and she just looks so like classy and like the hair is up in like a bun, and I just and it, and it kind of gives that vibe, and I just love the look, and I just you really. Know- you know, Arcia just Arcia just got a dog. Oh, we'll never see her again. Everyone say about Arcia. Arcia don't need to be having no damn dog. I'll tell you that much. This picture? No, Arcia uh, looks like she's uh, wiped her Instagram clean recently because there's nothing from before August 2022. Uh, Bob, that is Arcia every three months. <laughs> so it, it's gone. <laughs> um. Anyway, Alexis looks so good. So, so good. Let's go on to Jessica Wilde. Jessica Wilde. I think she looks really good. Uh, why is she making that face? I think they just got it. Whoever took the still just got her at a bad time. She, the face, she, all I still she's going. You know what she's doing? She's doing the Shaquita face. 
I was just talking to Shaquita too. Shaquita always smiles like the camera's gonna squirt water at her. <laughs> we should go see her in Vegas. You want to go see her in Vegas together? We could probably go. I mean, I don't know that we we can probably go. I, I saw her last show in New York City, uh, oh. which was which was so amazing. And it was like all Shaquita in Vegas. It was her plus like a bunch of other bitches. Um, let's go oh into uh, hot chocolate. Not a bitch. Let's go into Candy Muse. Candy Muse says something that bothered me. I don't know why it bothered me. I guess Candy I am. Muse. I am pedantic. What? She said, what? I am covered head to toe in feathers. <laughs> I mean, technically she is. No, she's covered from her <laughs> hips, from her underbust to her toes. And there's a big gap with nothing. There's one feather on her head. She's not, she has feathers on her head and on her toes, but she's not <laughs> covered head to toe in feathers. Oh my God. I think those might be little feathers on her, on, on the bodice. Boy. <laughs> I love this color. Obviously, yellow is my favorite color in drag. Um, her makeup is color out of drag. black. Her or white. I wear white sometimes too. Her makeup. This is make, candy makeup is always good. This eye makeup is so stunning. She, her eye makeup here is so, so stunning. I'm blown away. Yeah, I think she looks really good. Um, for her too, I would have liked a bigger wig. Bigger. <laughs> like, like ever since they slapped you for a kitty cat wig, now you hate all small wigs. That's not true. I wear small wigs all the time. Yeah, we know. Trust but, me, we know. But We've seen I, them. I feel like if this was something style, like you know, Candy is also she's worn a lot of like they kind of look like a messy updo curly thing. I feel like that with the feather in it would have been very. Would have been really beautiful. And this is beautiful too. I like this a lot, but I think a big styled, messy candy up to would have been really fierce with this as well. Let's go on to Jimbo, Jumbo the Drag Queen. This is really cool here. This is my favorite look Jimbo's ever worn. Yeah, I think this is really cool. Well, did you see a crowning look? It's fierce. Wait, so can we go back to the candy look really quickly? Yes. Yeah, what about it? Have you have you seen Monet? You see everyone's comparing it to this look you wore. I wore this. Yeah. Let me pull it up for you. Sorry, give me one second. On Drag yeah. Race? You wore this on a red carpet. It's the Yellowstone dress, Mona. Spaghetti strap. Oh, yeah, I did wear this. Oh, when I stepped down from Miss Congeniality. I told my name was a yeah. 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 Oh, my God. It is. I, I see that. I, I see the similarity now. So you think she you think she copied you? <laughs> oh my god! Um, I think Jimbo looks really really good. Um, Jimbo, you know, I take it back. This is not my favorite thing you've ever worn. Her promo look is is better than this, but this is just really really good. Did you see her crowning look though? It was really fierce. Yeah, I just saw it. It's really cool too. Yeah. Um, Jimbo is a really great drag queen. Like I I, I mean J yeah, Jimbo is Jimbo is fierce. Also, oh the look she wore for her for her talent for the lip sync in this episode. Was I think that was what was going to be her makeup look for the one last week or two weeks ago? For the oh, you got it. Her yeah. Jimbo's. Let's go on to the lip sync. So they terrible. lip sync to. You said terrible. No, no, no. I'm talking about something else. Go ahead. Oh, they lip sync to um, uh, not mighty, uh, not mighty real. Um, that's the best song though. I don't know this song. Do you, you, know funk, song? Do you want to funk with me? Do you want to funk with me? Bum, ba, da, 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 da. Ow! Yes, yes, I know the song. Um, and <laughs> just bobbing around the stage. Just first of all, the look is insane. Like I, I just don't get. I just I don't get it. And I clearly I like Jimbo. Jimbo, I wanted Jimbo to win. Jimbo is really fucking great. I fucking love Jimbo. I don't get the the titty thing and the butt thing. I just don't get it. It's, I just think it's not for me. It's clearly not for me. I think it's just the gag is her butt is boobs. And that's a gag? Obviously. Well, you know, a lot of people enjoy it. I'm sure a lot of people at work, the bars are probably, people are cracking up, kiki kaka. It's just not for me. And I accept that. I know that. I think that sometimes girls with titty bibs just go, they go so vulgar with the titty bibs. It's like, 
this is wild. But also, go off. Like, why not? Bitch, when Candy runs back up the stage, and first of all, they slowed the, they they cut the music out, and they made it seem like it was gonna be like something like wild, and then she <laughs> like slid on her knees, she kind of tripped on her knee, and it just they I was made, like, they why? Made, they made it seem like you, this bitch might be about to take flight. They made it seem like she was like she was a, <laughs> like she was a fucking seven forty seven for the runway. I thought she was gonna <laughs> fly around the room. And it was that I was like, they did her dirty. They should, they should not have made that a moment. Like they Yo, should not. Have you that. cannot slide on your knees yeah. on RuPaul's Drag Race because there are um, little thresholds. Uh, every square, there's a little threshold at every single. You will skip. You won't. You're not gonna smooth. You're gonna be. <laughs> kick, 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 kick. And she fell over. Like when what's her name in the UK uh, tried to slide on her knees and left the competition. Uh, Victoria's gone. Yeah, you can, y'all, to everyone listening, if you hear within the sound of my voice, do not try to slide on your knees on RuPaul's Drag Race. You'll be looking crazy as hell. You sure will. And it, it, she looked crazy. And I that's that, that's that's why she lost the lipstick and, 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 and uh, Jimbo don't like her. Um, So at the end of the lip sync, what do you, what do you think of the lip sync overall? It was not an impressive lip sync. It was not great. It was it was it was fine. It was not it was not a a, a, a fun lip sync to watch. It was fine. How does it compare to you versus Jinx? It's it's not no. How does it compare to you versus uh Cameron? You versus Dusty Red Bottoms? <laughs> no, that's not, that's not an iconic lip sync. You versus Valentina? Uh, no, I think that was a good lip sync too. You versus Naomi? That was a good lip sync too for Naomi. I mean, that was a, an iconic Naomi lip sync. You versus Mayhem. <laughs> you fucking. Well, I guess. We, <laughs> Daddy, I think we got you, one. You fucking bitch. You Daddy, fucking, I think we got one. <laughs> you fucking bitch. I hate you. <laughs> you are. So what you said? Too rude. Too. <laughs> I was at home, so I'm like, uh, my little boyfriend, no! Uh, <laughs> bitch, Manila gonna see that. Manila gonna drag you on the probably. chop this week. Probably, she, probably. And I deserve it. Quite drag you on the chop. Quite frankly, I deserve it. Manila, whatever you say about me, I deserve it. And you have every right to say everything you want. I made fun of a, a probably a very emotional moment for you in your husband's life. So you know what? Feel free to just let me have it. You're you're right and I'm wrong. Oh, I hope Manila writes a diss track about you. And, and you know what? And I'll and I won't even write one back. I'll just I'll just accept it and I'll say you you ate that. Her her uh, her husband commented on the the social media post that we did. What, what did he say? But he was just, he, it was like all in good fun. He was like, "This is funny." Uh-oh. I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> what, 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 you know, she's back. Who? She's on TikTok now. Who? Um, not you being possessed by Al. Um, <laughs> uh, Tamisha's back on TikTok and she's like, I'm going to tell, I'm, I got something to say. She's got like something to tell everyone. Okay, see, I'm nervous because last week on the podcast with Trinity, when you were here, I didn't, I, 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 I don't know, I'm the nerve. Did I say something? No, but I don't think it's about you. She's just like, I got something to say about something. Anyway, so, but tune in her. Okay, I, I will say she was, she was on TikTok Live and she was doing a live and everyone was asking her really messy questions. And somebody asked where she stood with you. And she said, oh, no, I'm cool with Baba Monet. I still blocked them both. And then she laughed. So <laughs> as of right now, I've heard that we're on good terms, but she is keeping you blocked. And I think I am, we can just I am indeed blocked. let it, I let blocked, it rest. I'm blocked, too. This is, y'all, Bob is living proof that where do you fucking uh, lay, lay down with dogs, you get fleas. Because of Bob. You're the dog. <laughs> You're the dog, bitch, and I'm covered in fleas. I was there when you battled uh, Tamisha. I was there when you battled the Vixen. I was there when you battled your wigs on uh, season 10. 
because of Bob, I'm blocked by the allegedly icon that is. I've been I've been there for every battle of yours, standing by your side, and now I'm tarnished because bitch, I hang around your dog ass. <laughs> this is my sister. I'm a sick beside her, and, and I'm I'm a stand by her too. <laughs> That's your sister. That's my sister, and I'm and I'm, and I'm a stand by her too. <laughs> So at the end of the lip sync, we find out that uh, the winner of the Fame Games is actually I think it was La before La that. Lala La Ree wins the Fame Game, which seems pretty clear. I mean, yeah. times three. Yeah, I, I, it, it seemed pretty clear. How I, was her social media? But she wasn't really social mediaing like that, which is kind of she annoying. She wasn't. But you know what it is? That congeniality charm. Like I think she was still riding off that congeniality. Like people just like people like Lala La Ree, and I and it, it, whatever she got it was times three. So you know. It worked. Yeah. Um, and the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 8, which we have said every single episode of the podcast, and the prediction, it was never a shock, uh, is, is indeed Jimbo. Jimbo is the first international queen inter- inducted into the um, Drag Race Hall of Fame. Drag Hall of Fame. Can I tell you, I've been telling these fucking all-star bitches this forever. No one wants to listen to me. Well, so, to be fair, someone has to put it together. We all need to like get on a Zoom and have like a green screen or go somewhere and film it on green screen of us like talking to each other in the hallway and just someone will edit it together. Wouldn't that be so cute? That would be cute. So the titles are American Next Track Superstar, Queen of All Queens, Queen of the Mother Tucking World, um, Inductee into the Drag Race Hall of Fame, Queen of the Fame Games, Queen of the Fame Games, Miss Congeniality, Fan Favorite. That's it. Yeah. And I've won two of them, which is fierce. I won two of them, yeah. There was one time where you were the most decorated queen in the history of Drag Race. I know, now it's I'm not. And then uh, Blue Hydrangea uh, dethroned you. <laughs> well, no, I think you were just you were just both. She was the, the second one to win um, win Drag Race after being Miss Congenial. Does anyone have three? Th- th- there's the thing. I, I have had the most Drag Race experiences. What? That's not true. What yes. Do you mean? I was on season 10. I was on All Stars 4. I, I, was, I was on a winner season. I was a judge on Canada Drag Race. I was a lip sync assassin. Um, I D- won. Does, does Juju B mean nothing to you? No, but I, but I should, all the things that I Juju B did was not a lip sync assassin. Juju B did not judge an uh, judge an episode of Drag Race. I was I was a judge on drag. I was a judge on Drag Race. Lip sync assassin. I won. I I lost. I was Miss Congeniality. Um. Oh, was, there's two other things that I've done, and I was but like, "Oh, work." You, how can you? How do you know that you're? Do you like to keep? Like, wait. I mean, the fans put this together. Someone tagged with tag me. I was like, the, Monet has had the most different drag race experiences. Oh yeah, the fans. The fans will come up with the most obscure drag race facts oh, so that I, are true, I'm but I do not doubt them. They'd be like, Monet was the second queen to dance wearing yellow pumps and a red red sweater. But I was <laughs> ketchup and mustard. Yeah, I mean, okay, GGB was on Queen of the Universe, mm-hmm. All Stars, All Stars, uh, a Celebrity. Was she on um, Drag You? Yeah, Celebrity, Drag oh, You. Oh, Celebrity, that's what I did, Celebrity. But she did Celebrity with you. Right. She was a Celebrity twice. No, she, no. And Drag You. She's part of a double chante. Were you in a double chante? Yes, me and uh, me and uh, Cameron. No, not me and Cameron. Me and no. uh, Manila. Jump to it. Were you in double elimination? No, DGB was not either. Did you cry while dressed like a supervillain? <laughs> did you cry while dressed like a superhero with Raven? Yes, like I did villain? actually. I did. <laughs> Wait, when? Super Queen. You cried? Yes. What backstage? We want to see it on camera. <laughs> we no. want you to, did you cry to dancing on your own? No, I, cr- <laughs> I did it. I cried when I had to choose between Jada and Trinity to take to the, the top four in All Star Seven, and I had my Super Queen outfit on. Work. Well, Monet, um, there it is. There you have it. Uh, what? Okay, so. Is there? Do you think it's time to start doing like specialized all stars? Yes, I would love to see a first out all stars. I would love to see the best friends race. I want to see like Violet Chachki go against Jinx and Dale. 
I would love. I would actually love to watch that. I don't know why first out all stars upsets me. I don't know why it upsets me so much. Maybe I need to just let it go. But it just seems like <laughs> because it seems like when everyone's asking for something and then you bring it and like you, like it's like uh if you if you're at the store and you're like what do you guys want and everyone's like I really really want some like pickle chips pickle potato chips and you're like you want pickle you're like yes and everyone's like yes yes please please bring the pickle potato chips and then I bring them and then no one eats them. And everyone's like, these chips are nasty as hell. That's what first out season seems like to me. Everyone's like, yes, right, speaking yes, of pickle please. Potato chips, can you tell Monet about this thing you made today? Yes. So the bitch that likes cool lickles. So cool lickles are the thing. Oh, I love, but pickle potato chips are too much. I like pickle potato chips actually. Why do you think other people don't like pickle potato chips? No, what I'm saying is, is if everyone's begging and everyone's like, yes, yes, please bring them. You bring them, and no one eats them. That's what the first out is giving to me. It's giving everyone's like, please. And then you get everyone's like, this is not a great season. Um, today I made, um, I took some pickle. I took a pickle. I chopped it up. And then I put it in a little Tupperware dish. And then I took some um, uh, Minute Maid, not Minute Maid, Crystal Light. Squeeze it in there with it. Put a little bit of tahini in it. Took some um, liquid I, some liquid IV. And then a little bit of um, smart sweets, and then you shit yourself. And I ate every bite, and it was delicious. And then you sh- and you're gonna shit yourself and tonight. Tahine. And tahin, and I and I do it again. Bop bop bop. And you're gonna shit yourself tonight in your bed. That no, sounds to, so fucking nasty. I'm coming to your bed to shit myself. Actually, <laughs> that sounds disgusting. Why? Bob, pickles, pickles, crystal light, ivy drip, tahine. Like, what do you mean? What? Why? I did not say ivy drip. (laughs) Liquid ivy, whatever the hell it is. Wait, Wait, liquid ivy is a a sponsor for this (laughs) fucking. Make sure sure you get your liquid ivy, y'all. It really is great. Liquidiv.com slash sibling rivalry. (laughs) You are wild. How do you feel about this season? Um, on a scale of one through eight, where would you put this season with the other would, all-stars? Like one being the bottom, eight being the best? Sure, that works, yeah. I mean, normally one's the best. What? Normally, number one is the best, but if you, but I don't know how y'all doing the St. Lucia. <laughs> you know, um, one of my favorite bits is to go to lift something with someone and then go one. It's like you grab something heavy or a table and you're, all right, one. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> and then you go, oh, on three. Oh, on three. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, All Stars Two is the best. Then seven. I just want you to rank this one. I don't. I don't need your comprehensive list. I just want I, you to I, rank I, this I, one. I need, I need some, can I process? I'm. I'm an external processor sometimes. Um, I'll shut the hell up. <laughs> do you want me? Do you want me to stop talking while you process, or do you need, or do you do you need like complete silence, or do you just need to not be? Uh, you just need more time. Like, what? What is it for you? Ooh, in terms of, if one is the best, I'm putting All Stars eight at seven. What about you? And I'm assuming only All Stars one is worse. Yeah. What about you? Where? How, wait, what do you rank it? They get the same thing. I agree. <laughs> I agree. You ate that. You ate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's the best all stars? The best one? Oh, yeah. two down. Down. It was so all good. Stars, it was one of the best fucking seasons of Drag Race it's ever. It's such good TV. It was really real good. What's, what, what's second? Uh, seven. What's third? Um, I'm going to go with... You know, Trixie's season was pretty good. No! <laughs> what you hoping I say four? Four was good, too. Four and three were both really good, though. You know, I just really love... I just think Kitty Girl is just... When I think about Kitty Girl, I, sometimes when I'm on the street, I listen to Kitty Girl. I do that, too. I listen to, I listen to Kitty Girl. Kitty Girl is a good song. 
Step into the plate. Okay, people don't give Trixie credit for that, that verse. Can we just say it again? Step into the plate. I'm Trixie Mattel. Got my name in the game. Better learn it well because I'm the MVP heading up to bat. And I go to third base, but I never tell that. I got bleach in the blonde like Pamela. And I'm stepping out the box like Shangela. I got long, thick legs. A tarantula. And if you call me kitty girl, I can handle you. Uh, that is a great verse. Mira, mira on the wall. Who's the fattest of them all? Face, 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 body and all. Another day, another slay. Meow, meow, savage beauty stepping out on the mission. Get fierce, the ready. The old, see, season three was so great because of the, I mean, the self-elimination. The top queen taking her. That's the only time they, they, that's the only time that the top queen has ever taken us out of the competition. Yeah, I agree. I mean, wait, back to Kitty Girl. Who, who had the best verse? I think Chandra had the best verse, though. Oh, it was Trixie. No, Shangela. Step aside. I'm. Can you revert the whole verse? Step aside. I'm back again. So hype, so lit, adrenaline. I'm Shangela. Say what? Solid and baby out of all grown up. What's the next word? We're gonna take this verse just to let you know. Never listen to the haters. Be your pro, cause I work my way, paid my dues, and I got the whole world going all alone. And she does. She does. It's true. It's true, but I think I just like um I like the now like the way that Trixie's verse had like compliment like um um step into the step into the plate I'm Trixie Mattel, so she 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 has a setup like she has a scheme, like who else in Drag Race is doing schemes? Uh, with their when rap? <laughs> When'd you do a scheme? All Star Seven. What was it? Realize a triple crown is what is what I'm here is why I'm after. Bow down, kiss the ring, call me master. That's a setup. It's not a set. It's called a scheme. Queen of serving face. Yeah. But okay, Trixie's okay. Trixie's scheme was a little bit was was like it, it went over a few lines. Step into the plate. I'm Trixie Mattel. Got my name in the game. Better learn it well. Cause I'm the MVP. Can you say the first line again? Step into the plate. I'm Trixie Mattel. So like I'm stepping up to the plate. Step in- No, it's step into the play. Cause she's a Barbie and Mattel's yeah. no, no, that's is I'm telling you, that's not, I promise you, that's not it. I'm telling you right now, whatever website know? you're on, I promise you, that is not it. I, and I'm How telling you, know? you, this is my promise to you, because that doesn't make sense. Step yeah, I mean, the, I agree. I stepping I to the play. Was- well, how does I that make thought, sense? I thought it was yours, but I'm just listen. Jacob's. Uh, no, it is mine. That whatever website you're on is wrong. There's no way it's stepping to the play. How does that make stepping to the play? What does that mean? Like a like a play, like a play. I thought it. Was, I thought it was like one of the Mattel catchphrases they had on their toys. No, it's stepping to the plate. Like she's stepping up to the like <laughs> the the plate is where you go when you're yeah, gonna like, swing the bat. Up to that. Well, I guess I just look like an old dumb bitch. <laughs> so she goes, step into the plate. I'm Trixie Mattel. Got my name in the game, the, the baseball game. Better learn it well. Because I'm the MVP heading up to bat. And I go to third base. But I'd never tell them. That is, that is really good writing. Step aside. I'm back again. So hype. So lit. Adrenaline. I'm Shangela. Say what? <laughs> so, but you're not but you, you're just saying it you're not like talking about what's great but you're just saying it slowly <laughs> like can we just ex, like expound upon the smartness of the line like got my name in the game better learn it well because I'm, I'm the MVP heading up to bat like this, she's keeping up with the thing and I go to third base but I would never tell that that is <laughs> so fucking fierce <laughs> I got bleach in the blonde like Pamela. And I'm stepping into the box like Shangela. I got long, thick legs. I type Angela. Okay, she's not Nicki Minaj. Fucking fuck, Trixie Minaj. Trixie Minaj. I, I'm long, thick legs. I type Angela. <laughs> I think I'm going to start wearing lashes like out of drag. It just really changes you. Look at that. I'm a different person. <laughs> I think I, I support this. I support this movement for you. Right? Marsha. Um, can you send me some more lashes? Buy them. Buy them. Marsha. Hey, you can buy is, them. This, You'll this buy is free, them. This is free promo. This is I'm promo her shit. Marsha, don't do not do not let Monet bully you. Monet can afford to buy lashes. <laughs> I can't. So don't don't Monet listen, Monet. The, 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 you, whenever they eat the rich, we're coming to your house first. <laughs> Out in these streets begging for free lashes. We coming to your house first, honey. You ever get in trouble for begging as a kid? You seem like you was a begging ass kid. <laughs> I know a beggar when I see. I know you was a begging ass. 
what it was, was even if I wasn't hungry, if my if the neighbor offered me something wearing over, oh bitch, I'm taking it. I'm taking I, it. I, I have a feeling you didn't wait to the offer. I have a feeling you have, I did not beg. I did not beg. You never you, you beg. never got told stop begging. No, I did not. I feel like if I called Kamika right now, she'd be like, that's not true. She no, Kamika's gonna tell you. First of all, it's three. It's it's three. No, we're not months. going to. But if, every time we've ever called Kamika, she's always corroborated my story. Every time. That is not, Bob. That is not true. When has Kamika ever corroborated your story? You can I just say things that's not true? When has Kamika ever corroborated your story? She has before. Absolutely. I don't remember off my head. When did she corroborate yours? The sweater. What sweater? Thank you all for joining us for Sibling Rivalry. <laughs> I will see you all in the next episode where I will where I will hopefully be by myself. <laughs> Bob, let's play Smash for a little bit. We can't. I'm a little sleepy, but we can, though. Oh, uh, yeah. Be, well, I don't, what's, okay, uh, bye, everyone. <laughs>